Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to. So now, talking about your your daddy's uh, song, how were you able to master them? Was he yes, teaching you the lyrics when he was alive, or you took your time to? How 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 did it happen? How were you able to to, to, so, to I mean, yeah? Um, the 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 opportunities that I got to um, watch him perform and to also work with him as a backup singer, you know, oh. made me know most of the songs however there were some that i didn't really know until he passed on you know so i took my time to listen to his songs to learn them because these are songs that i would also like to perform on the stage you know because um his songs are quite deep and meaningful you know so um and and i mean some people call him a prophet which i would like to call him as well because his song has remained very very le relevant to time you know it's it, his song is very, very um, green, you know, it still resonates with this generation, with all that is transpiring in the world today and all of that, you know. Okay. Now, while your father was alive, were there times, you know, that both of you stopped together for him to, you know, give you a lesson on some of the lyrics or to let you know, you know, was there ever a time that something like that happened? Maybe you, you went to him to say, oh, you know, I couldn't yeah, get yeah, a yeah. boy Yes, I, I, there, there are times I asked him what inspired him to do some certain songs, you know, apart from his songs, like the, the very one prominent question that stood out for me was what's, what inspired him to wear his dreadlocks, you know, and one of the story he told me was um, that growing up as a kid back in the village, you know, at that time, a lot of young boys were being killed because of rich craftsy and stuff like that, you know. And um, that was the period he started growing his dreadlocks and um, also they, um, started living his vegetarian lifestyle, you know. So at every point in time when he went to somebody's house and they were going to offer him food, you know, his excuse is that he doesn't eat meat and he knows that everybody cooks meat, uh, meat stock, you know. So even when they say, okay, we'll not put meat for you, he says, oh, but you cooked with the water so I can't eat it. And that stuck with him for years. And that stuck with him for years, you know, because, um, as you know, because um, he became vegetarian and he just couldn't stand eating any food that was cooked with meat stock. He would react immediately, you know. So, um, and he said, growing his dreadlocks saved his life, you know, because every time he came home from Lagos, you know, he went, he, he came home from Lagos to, to see his family back home, you know, they, they, they would always say, oh, I leave kimono, he's already mad, you know, see his hair now, his hair is twisted already, he's already mad, it's, you know. <laughs> okay, now, you, you grew up with your grand uh, mother yeah. Yeah. what fond memories of your days with her you know can you um, remember oh my grandmother was a very psychedelic woman <laughs> she was so psychedelic she, she 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 um my grandmother exposed me to music at a very early stage because she was she was a huge she fan of her. Yeah, she was a huge fan of um, rock and roll. She was a huge fan of blues, you know. In fact, I mean, Tina Turner was her favorite artist of all time, you know. So when Tina Turner passed on a, a few weeks ago, it, it kind of like brought back memories, you know. And um, yeah, I think mean, she was a societal woman at, at the time as well, you know. And um, <laughs> there were too many fond memories, too many fond memories. I remember one was the first time she came to my secondary school to visit me during visiting day you know because my grandma was so light-skinned she was like fino she had that gray eye she was that white and then she had black hair you know like she was really really um exceptional she's always stood out wherever she went you know so I, I remember the kids gathering and saying, I would say it's in Igbo. I mean, I'm sorry for the people that don't understand Igbo. I would translate, you know. And then the kids, when they came out, they saw it, they said, Onya Chabiel, Onya Chabiel, Onya Chabiel. Like, the white woman has come, the white woman has come, you know. And I was wondering who is this white woman that they were talking about, Onya Chabiel. And then, you know, they, and then the next day, they called me and they said, Oh, your grandma is outside. I'm like, Oh, it's my grandma. They're calling on your child. They're like, <laughs> 
Oh my. Interesting. Now, you don't get married. Are you married? Yes, I am. I am married. Would you like to tell us a little about your family, your husband, and your beautiful daughter? Yes. But yes, my husband is from um, Plateau State. You know, uh, yes, he's from Plateau State, and he also comes from a somewhat kind of entertainment background, you know, because um, his father was um, the founding, uh, or, or, or the founder, the founder and the, and one of the people that established the um, NTA School of School of uh, Film or something like that in Joss. You know, he was. Um, he was uh, one of the top directors in NTA then, you know. What's his name? Uh, Mr. Sunday Obed Jato. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's up, up until today, his his uh, picture hangs there in PR TV in uh, in Joss, you know, and uh, NTA as well, you know. So um, he, he's uh, he comes from an entertainment background so he understands what it is to be with a, a musician if for anything I am grateful that I, I, I God blessed me with a man like that who understands the, the the path and my journey and the legacy that I am keeping and growing you know so he has been everything supportive in every form in every way you can think of how did both of you be? Met, I, we met at um, a, a bikers lounge where I usually do my um, my reggae party. So I was running a reggae party for three years up until 2020 when COVID hit. So I actually started running the reggae party before my dad passed on. And the days that I couldn't be at my reggae party and my father was in Abuja, he would cover up for me, you know. And I just saw that um, somebody joined this conversation who happens to manage the place where I met my husband. It's called the O9 the O9 as the O9 uh, Clubhouse. It's uh, somewhere in in Wuse Zone four in Abuja. So that was where I met my husband. Well according to him, he says he had met me long before then, but I don't remember that. This is the one I remember. <laughs> Did you guys get married while your father was still alive or after he no, had passed Unfortunately on? not. It was after my father passed on. You know, I, I think yeah. God sent me my husband as a comforter. Oh. You know, because it was a it was a, t a period of trial and t tribulation. It was so it was so heavy, you know. But um, he came and he just uh, he was that support system that I needed at that time. So how do you feel that your father was not alive? You know, to see you get married and give him a grandchild. I I I mean I you know every time people see my child they, they always say oh if your father was alive you know this child won't be with you right i said yeah i know you know it's it's it, it's it, it saddens me you know that he was not um alive you know to to make my child you know however there, i mean there's a, a, a downside to my father not being there to you know to see me get married and all of that and then there was also a positive side to it because i know that I mean, if my father was alive, I wouldn't have the privilege, you know, to keep my private life a bit private as I would have wanted it. <laughs> you know, kimono, everybody will come out for kimono, you know. And we used to have this conversation. I used to tell him, I said, you know, when I'm getting married, I, I, the most I can give you is my traditional marriage. You can do anything. If you want to, you invite the whole world, no problem. But you see my white wedding? I own it. I will. I will act accordingly to how I want it. <laughs> you, you, you had an album in 2019 called uh, Good Old Days. Yes. Okay. Um, the, the album didn't really make uh, so much impact. Yes. Why was it so? And also tell us about the album. Okay. So 2019, I released the album Good Old Days, and I was. Um, I was doing some nationwide tour. I had done one. Um, in uh, Lagos, I had done one in Aquaibon State, I had done one in Plateau, I had done one in River State, you know. So, you didn't the plan was. Do anyone in Delta State? Yeah. So, the plan was yeah. to take it round. And then COVID oh. hit in 2020. Okay. You know? okay. And then everything kind of stopped.